morning, church. Welcome to Yishun Methodist Mission Worship Service. Let's begin our worship service together uh, with the call to worship. May I, can I uh, invite you to stand, please? Come, let's worship the God who calls us. With patience and love, we come as one family. As the body of Christ, let us speak the truth in love and grow up in every way into Christ. We rejoice and thank God for His mercy and love. We sing and raise our voices in gratitude for His grace. Amen. Let's remain standing and let's worship the Lord together. Today is a happy day because we are celebrating Jesus, our risen King. Look to Him, the one who gives us life.
Yes, Lord, because of you, we are never the same. Because you have changed our lives. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 8, it says, Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by being obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Lord, all praise, glory, and honor belong to you. For there is none like you. No one's love can be greater than yours. For you laid down your life for the world. We rem remember, Lord, what you have done for us. And we sing of the salvation we have in our lives. We thank you that we have you in our lives.
the vine and we are the branches whoever abides in you and you in him it is he that bears much fruit for apart from you Lord we can do nothing Lord we long to know you and abide in you in a much deeper level and even Lord in our daily walk with you. Enable us to walk in step with the Holy Spirit and live lives that glorify your name. Lord, we know that you are God who looks at our hearts. So we want to come as we are in vulnerability, Lord. We want to encounter you.
Spirit of prayer, let's just take a seat. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that there is no greater privilege in our lives than knowing you. Because we know you for what you are and how much you have loved us. We find love that brings us freedom. Your word has shown, your word has shown to us in Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 to 14. You were dead because of your sins, Paul said. And because of your sinful nature was not yet cut off then God made you alive with Christ. For He forgave all your sins. He cancelled the record of the charges against us and it took away by nailing it to the cross. Lord Jesus, we are thankful. We are thankful and we are assured that when we finally stand before you, we will not find condemnation because of our sins, even because of our inclination in our sinful nature. Instead, we will have a loving Father that awaits us to welcome us into His kingdom because Jesus has cancelled the record of the charges that was made against us because of our sin. And He took it away by nailing it together with Himself to the cross. He paid the penalty, He paid the wages, He paid the salary of our sin. And we thank You, Lord. Father, as the Lord Jesus has said, that Lord, when the Son came to set us free, we will be free indeed. And Father, we thank You for this freedom that we can have in You. Thank You we find freedom from the judging law. We find freedom from the curse of sin, from the need to try to earn our worthiness before a righteous God. We thank You that we have freedom to enjoy Christ and the freedom to know You and being Your sons and daughters through faith in Jesus Christ. So this morning we come. We come before you and ask you, Lord, to give us that freedom that is found in you. That indeed we can be free from all the things that binds us, all the things that weigh us down. Even with sickness and, and struggles, Lord, we ask that you come, Lord, and heal us. Strengthen us in the inner man that whatever may, the world may throw at us, whatever the soul, the, 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 the lives on earth will has thrown at us, Lord, we, we have become more and more like Jesus in our deeds. We find strength to become more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. We thank you, Lord, for such freedom. Then together as your church, we pray, Lord, for our churches in Singapore. We pray for our people all over the land, Lord, that we may be indeed people of freedom people who are free to do what is right, people who are free to rejoice in You because, Lord, You have given us Your grace and Your goodness. That we may walk with You, that we may become light and salt of the world, especially in places that You have deployed us, in our workplace, in our family, in our community. That we may become people who will shine forth your goodness. 
that people around us will be curious and envy how we have found freedom in living the abundant life that you have promised in John 10, 10. So as your church, help us to see your goodness, Lord, even much more in our lives. That we may declare the praise of your glory. That we may declare your righteousness. That we may declare the goodness that you have, you have shown in our lives. The answered prayer. The grace that you have given us to go through different tough times. Lord, we commit ourselves before you. We pray for our church that, Lord, there will be a continual renewal of leadership in our church. The young people will arise to take hold of the mandate that you have given to us to go and make disciples of all the nations and see them coming to know you. Father, we pray, Lord, that these young people will rise up to chase their ten thousands, Lord, and become attractive both as believers, both to believers as well as pre-believers. Lord, you know our hearts, you know each of our situations in life. Some of us are hurting, grieving. Some of us are crying out for you to deliver us, to heal us, to save us. Lord, you know each one of us. As we take a moment right now, and Lord, we talk to you about our struggle. May you hear us. Are you going through some difficult times? Right now, just take some time. Talk to the Lord right now. Or if there's a concern in your heart, talk to the Lord right now. Jesus said, until now you have asked for nothing in my name. Ask, ask and you will receive that your joy may be made full. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for hearing our prayers. We commit this before you and place it before your throne and ask of you, Lord, that as we come before your throne of grace, Lord, you will come through for us. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now we have the scripture reading. This morning's scripture reading is taken from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 1 to 16. I'm reading from the ESV. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, there is one body and one Spirit just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gifts. Therefore it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives, and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower regions, the earth? He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children, 
tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. This is the word of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Good morning, church. I want to start today's sermon by polling the congregation. A question to ask you, you look at the sermon title, you probably will have guessed, huh? and uh, the reading that James has given us, you probably will have guessed what we're going to talk about today. Uh, but before we go into uh, the Word of God, a poll of, uh, not the audience, but the congregation, do you think that YMM, we are a united church? Uh, so I'm going to put the audience, okay? Have a number in your mind. Zero is we are divided. Uh, ten is uh, we are the church in heaven already. Uh, very united. What number would you give? Is YMAM a united church today? Today, uh, don't say it, uh, last year, ten years ago. Today, do you think that YMAM is a united church? Okay, if your answer is above five, would you put up your hand? Look around, you can look around. Uh, this is where we like put a mirror in front of white man like that. Huh? We, okay, thank you. Uh, for uh, the rest of us, you must make a point, okay? Uh, if your number is less than five, would you put up your hand? Look around. <laughs> hey, then the rest, hey, bitch it, uh, not answering my question. But it's okay. Uh, maybe you are still thinking about it. Today, I asked about white man. But when we look around... Uh, the church in the world, can we say that the church is united? I think in our time and age, we have become even clearer, right? That everyone wants to be entitled to their view of what the church is. So today as we think about unity, or I put it on a slide, I call it oneness uh, for, for our children to understand, to be one. There are many of us, but we are to be one. Do you feel like YMM, we are united? After 35 days of praying together, huh, we went through the same thing, right? Every morning you're still listening, right? To the devotion and still praying to God. Do you feel like after 35 days, YMM have become more united? I, I felt the unity, to be honest, when we met together for uh, the prayer walk and the prayer drive. That I could see in our faces eagerness, to bless the land of Ishun. But yet, when I sat and when I thought, as I prepared for today's sermon, is YMM united? Or how, uh, now that I'm a senior pastor of the church, how can I make YMM more united? Wow, this is difficult. Uh, if you have an answer to it, please come and speak to me after the sermon, okay? Uh, after the service, I will be glad to hear from you. But what is interesting, I think, today is let's look at the objective phenomenon of what united or be, being in unity means. Yeah? So Ephesians 4, uh, these 16 verses shows us the picture of unity. It's very interesting that as I, as I meditate on this passage, just so much to say and today is Holy Communion Sunday, I, I can't uh, give an hour sermon. But I, I want to highlight to you some things that you can begin to think about unity. You know, when you think about unity in the church, what the Bible says uh, Paul paints us a picture. He gives us an image. The body of Christ. Uh, we said it during the call to worship, right? The body of Christ. Maybe some of us are very familiar with it. Think about it. Why is the body of Christ called the body of Christ? Why is the church called the body of Christ? Because there's only one body, right? But there are many parts. First Corinthians 12, you were to read it. So the image stays with us. There's one body. 
and there's one atal, right? There's only one head, nah? and that is Christ, right? That is the first picture that Paul gives us in this passage. The second picture that he gives us is, you heard James read the word one seven times. Uh, children, if you take out your uh, handout, you can help us here. Uh, in verse 4, uh, adults, you can turn to your Bible. I'm not going to show it on the screen. Uh, practice a bit of your fingers. Huh? Uh, open your Bible to uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4. What are the seven ones? Children, help us here. What is the first one that is in uh, the passage? One, body. What else? One, one spirit. Uh, my eyesight not very good. One hope. What else? One. I can't hear. One Lord. Thank you. Any any more one? We need another three more ones. One faith. One baptism. And last one? One God. Huh? So Paul uses seven ones. To tell us seven in the Bible is a perfect number. To illustrate oneness. To tell us that, look, there is unity in the Christian faith. And what does that mean? I'm going to begin with uh, verses, 11 to, uh, verses 1 to 11. To, to tell us that Paul firstly begins by explaining that our unity comes from God. Strange idea, right? Because it uh, happened that this Friday we are celebrating some form of unity. Huh? Uh, some of us are involved in the parade. We are celebrating unity as a, as a country. So we have activity to climax, to, the, to, to tell us that we are one Singapore. But yet, Paul here says, no, no, no. Unity is not what you achieve. Unity comes from God. It is not something that the church, you and I, can create. And so in verse 3, I highlighted there in green, he says, be eager to maintain the unity in the spirit in the bond of peace. He uses the word maintain. For our children amongst us, this word can be translated also to keep or maybe more forcefully to guard the unity. You see, there's, there's a slight difference here in understanding what unity is. He assumes, Paul assumes that unity is already there. So our role as Christians, as the body of Christ, we are to keep it, we are to guard it, we are to handle it safely so that it continues. Paul assumes here that unity is already present because the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, has given unity. Our contribution to unity is first of all to guard it. It is like upkeeping plants. Uh, I think some of us here, we have plants at home, right? So in order for the plant to continue huh, and not wither and die, what, what you need to do? Uh, the young scientists amongst us will tell us, uh, you need sunlight, you need food, you need air, you need good soil and water, right? So in the same way, when we think about unity, when we think about maintaining unity or keeping unity, there are some important elements that you and I need to have in order to hold on to this unity that God has given us. So in verse 2, Paul tells us these are a set of elements that must be present for us to maintain unity. He goes on to describe uh, some virtues. To be humble, to be gentle, patient, bearing with each other in love. Dear friends, does these few words describe who you are today in the church? I have to say that all of us, we are capable to be proud. It's possible in many instances for us to be harsh towards each other. We are all capable to be short-tempered. We are all capable to choose not to forgive. But whenever these happen, unity is lost. Brothers and sisters, in order to keep unity, Paul says to us, we need to be humble. We need to be gentle and patient. We need to be forgiving towards each other. 
Unity is present. But could it be by our careless attitude, unity is lost in the church today? So today, if you felt like uh, when I begin the sermon, like there's no unity in the church, maybe we look at ourselves first and ask, are you maintaining unity by your attitude towards each other in the body of Christ? I, I say this uh, with much reflection. That it, that as a pastor, I'm not perfect. But I realize that what Paul describes here in these virtues these are all the things that we can have if we walk with Jesus every day. Because this is basically what, who Jesus is. Dear friends, if you desire to be more humble, to be more gentle, if you desire to learn to forgive others, uh, to be more patient, God has already provided us the way to maintain unity if we will walk with Jesus closely. This is the first element that uh, Paul paints for us. For you and I to maintain unity in YMM, we must have this set of virtues. And then he goes on to another element that must be present. In verse 7, he says, But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. If you read down in the following verses, I'm not going to show here, but to verse 8 and 9, can you understand what Paul is trying to say in verse 8 and 9? What is this ascended, descended, what, what, captives? Paul actually is quoting from Psalm 68. Psalm 68 paints a picture of a divine warrior. They have conquered all the enemies and he is victorious. And he comes to give divine gifts to his people. And so Paul quotes these verses to tell us that Christ as the head of the church, as the divine warrior who is victorious, he has given his gifts to each one of us. So here Paul says that God has made each one of us different by graciously blessing us with different gifts. And so I think it's important that today when we think about unity, we begin to ask ourselves, huh? How do we see this community here? Do we see it through God's eyes? Because if you see it through God's eyes, you will not come with an assumption that the person sitting next to you or behind you must be the same as you. Right? Because this verse tells us that God has created each one of us different. Since each one of us has a measure of Christ's gift, so we expect each other to be vastly different. And maybe you experience that in yourself, huh? or maybe an issue that comes up, and then you, you sit around the table over lunch talking to other Christians, and you realize that, oh, this person has quite a different view with me. Huh? This person's approach is quite different. Right? To some of us, God has given us the gift of justice. So we are very vocal. So we are very clear that this is wrong and this is right. right? To some of us, God has given us more the gift of love. So he says, relax, relax, come, talk nicely, okay? Don't just insist on your view, we need to talk nicely, right? You see, God is so vast that none of us have all of God's nature. That God's nature is given to each one of us according to his grace, according to the measure of Christ's gift to us. To maintain unity, you and I, need to begin to appreciate this point more and more. We need to recognize God's nature given to our brother or sister in our cell is different from us. And so, this is the particular reason why we need each other. God has never created a Christian to be alone, but God has created a Christian to be in a community to maintain that unity because each of us have a different measure of Christ's gift towards us. So brothers and sisters, do you recognize that each of us is different from you? Because God has given us different gifts. And so the expression of it is we take on different roles. So in verse 11, very quickly, Paul shows us some roles. And these roles are not exhaustive. Huh? Uh, but these roles are 
examples of the gifts that God has given us. This rose shows us that God has created us to need each other. Unity is maintained when we learn to rely not only on God, but to rely on the body of Christ. When we learn to rely on other Christians. So I, I like to uh, say this often uh, when I do a membership class, huh? when I lead uh, some of us who wants to become members in YMM. I often give the picture like this. Today you join us uh, as a YMM family. Are you ready to give and take? Some of us, we are very good at giving. We are the martyrs in the house. Everything also we can do, 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 and we enjoy doing. The more we do, the more happy we become, the more energetic we become. I praise God for you. <laughs> but if you are a martyr, are you ready to receive? When other people say, you rest, you rest, let me do, let me do. Are you ready to allow the person to participate so that we need each other? Uh, there are some of us, uh, this one is very common in many churches, huh? uh, Christians who like to take. Uh, they come, they cross their leg or they shake leg as like consumers like that. Uh, uh, come, wow, wonderful worship. After that, go for lunch, go home. Then the uh, cell leader asks, hey, can you help to lead worship? Uh, can you help to serve in this area? We have outreach. Would you come and participate? Then he said, no, no, no. no. I, I'm a taker. I'm not a giver. You, you, look, you look for that one. To maintain unity, we must learn to give and take, brothers and sisters. Are you a giver or a taker? Then make sure you are a bit more balanced. You learn to maintain unity by needing each other. This is how God has created us to be. That we maintain unity by depending on each other's gifts. God has made us different and so we, we are one when we learn to work with each other, when we learn to live together as a community. How else can we be united in Christ? Very quickly, I move on to my second point. In verse 12 to 16, I don't expect you to read the words here, but I want to point out to you that in these short verses, it is full of action verbs, building up the body of Christ, attaining to the unity of faith, speaking the truth in love, making the body grow, building up in love. Paul repeats the same thing in different ways and the message is clear. That our, our response to the measure of Christ's gift that has been given to you is to act upon it. It is not that you act yours, I act mine and that's it. But he here chooses to use we all the time that all of us need to be doing it collectively. Uh, or for the children, collectively means we need to be doing it all together. That no one person is possible to build up the church. No one, possible, no one group of people is possible to build up the body of Christ. And hence, today, when the church employs staff, the staff are not supposed to be like we have in a secular organization. The staff is not supposed to be people who serve and then the worshippers come and be the client and the customers. But rather, Paul points out to us in these verses that pastor's calling is to equip the saints to do the work of ministry. That is in verse 12. I identify myself as the shepherd, as a teacher. My role is to equip you, the saints, to do the work of ministry. This means that all of us in the body of Christ, we are involved in building up this church. Each of us have an important role that we learn to put into action the gift that Christ has given us. And this is the reason why when you come for membership class, we often ask our new members, uh, you hear in their sumpa, in their vow towards God that they will serve the church by their presence, by their gifts, by their prayers. Taking part in community life means that we put our gifts to use for the building of the body of Christ. More specifically, Paul here lays out for us that there's a clear aim 
That when we build the body of Christ, the clear aim is to strengthen it in love. Not to tear it down, but to speak the truth in love. In order for us to attain unity, you and I need to give of ourselves to each other. I think this is then an important time for us to reevaluate our role in this community. May I ask you, dear friends, how are you building up this body of Christ here in my man? I want to say, on one hand, it is not, I'm not trying to call you uh, to serve in a committee or organize an activity, okay? Uh, that's not my aim. On the other hand, I also want to point out for you to be involved in the building up the body of Christ. It is not only coming to church on Sunday and attending yourself. That is not enough to build up the body of Christ. Build up is an action verb. Our active involvement matters for us to attain unity, for us to finally arrive at unity. Whatever the measure of Christ's gift has been given to you, God's purpose is for us to grow in unity. And so I believe in every season that God has given YMM, God calls different one of us to contribute to His work of accomplishing His purpose amongst us. So I ask you again, dear friends, did now, right now, what is your role in building up the body of Christ? You may have your view about your role in building up the body of Christ, but I think we need to learn to evaluate the effects of our role. For example, is your presence here today building up someone? Have you spoken a word of encouragement or do you just come and sit, worship and then leave after that? To build up the body of Christ, we learn to serve each other. It is not about completing some Christian task that has been given to us. It is not about being involved in church activities. But it's about us serving each other so that the other person will grow in maturity in Christ. Regardless of your role that God has given you, we have the same goal. We must cause each other to grow. And this is unity. When the person that you are serving and you yourself become more like Jesus Christ, unity is attained. Of course, on the flip side, there may be things that we accidentally do huh, that sometimes cause disunity. Sometimes we walk out and say, this person, why am I? Are you trying to sow discord? Or are your words building up the body of Christ? Dear friends, if we want to achieve unity, there must be collective growth. And I want to say that in YMM, this is one aspect that we are working hard together. We want to attain the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. And I share with you this example that maybe a lot of us doesn't know. You know, one of the reasons why we have membership in the church is we keep each other close to Jesus. And so we have a wonderful group of leaders uh, who are often not uh, caught out uh, about what they do. But there is a group of leaders that quietly reach out to our members who are no longer worshipping with us regularly for a few years. There are leaders here who say, come back because we need to grow collectively. It is not only about me or you growing. We need the body of Christ to come together to grow collectively. And perhaps you have experienced that also in a different level in yourself. Cell chat, 20 names. Cell attendance, every week, 10, 12, sometimes 8. 
And then, out of uh, the passion for God's people, right, you go and text somebody who is not here. Come lay, come lay, come la. We have dinner. Come la, we make it fun for you. Tolong, tolong la, come. <laughs> How will we attain unity if we are not even present, dear friends? To attain unity requires, here it says, we all attain to the unity of faith. It requires us to be present. Unity is only possible if there is collective growth. In other words, unity is the, at the point the weakest when the person is not with us. Dear friends, perhaps... God has placed in you a hunger for unity. And that maybe expresses itself in your heart. For a particular friend that you're concerned, there is, don't know whether still walking with Jesus or not. I, may I suggest to you that that is a good passion to have. That God has placed in you the desire to attain the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Not only for yourself, but for the body of Christ. I'm going to quickly conclude today's sermon by pointing out to us that growth happens not only in individuals, but it needs to happen across for all of us in the body of Christ. Then we can attain unity. So, I make my two points. Is unity maintained or is unity achieved or attained? They are quite different concepts, right? Uh, may I suggest to us that this concept of unity is a paradox. Uh, if you are taking notes, children, paradox spells as P-A-R-A-D-O-X. Paradox means that there are two contrasting opposite aspects of the same truth, Right? Just now, we heard of a paradox when the worship team led us. Man of sorrows. Who is this man of sorrows? Is Jesus Christ our God? Why is he God and why is he sorrowful? Because he was nailed on the cross. Paradox. And that is what our faith is. So may I suggest to us, when we think about unity, unity is a paradox. That on one hand, we are called to guard it. On the other hand, we are called to increase it. Perhaps on one hand, it is God's perspective of us, the body of Christ. We are called to guard the unity that has been given by the Spirit of God. But on the other hand, as fallen humans, we are called to achieve it because too often our lives is tainted with sin that we cannot be united until Jesus finally comes. So dear friends, with this uh, understanding of what unity is, uh, would you again evaluate for yourself today, do you think that YMM is united? I hope we are, because we are coming to this meal that will unite us, this meal that we celebrate every month to remind us that we are one, because our atau, has laid down his life for us, for you and me. Let us pray. As we quieted down our hearts, why is the Lord speaking to you today? As we think about our church, what is the Lord saying to you today? Heavenly Father, as we sit in quietness in your presence, we thank you for bringing us into this body of Christ. That at times, Lord, we wonder why. That we deserve to be part of your body. Because, Lord, we want to say that you deserve better. 
better than us, this group of sinners. But yet you choose to use us by giving us, each one of us, a set of your gifts in our lives. Lord, we come before you and we ask that you use it for your glory, Lord. That as we learn to give of ourselves to each other and to you, to you and your body, would you use the work of our hands to build up the church? Because we know that the day is evil. We know that it is not easy to be Christians today. And so would you bring us closer together in love for you and for each other. Mold us and shape us, Lord, we pray. For we pray all these in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let's stand. Let's respond to the Lord in humility and obedience. Yes, Lord, our heart's desire is to see your body united. And so we ask that you begin with us as we respond to your word.
by partaking of this meal that brings us together, Lord, indeed, may you grant us unity here in YMM. This is our heart's cry, O oh God. Would you receive it gracefully, O oh God, we pray. For we ask all these in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Welcome once again to Yishun Methodist Mission. Those of us who are here and those of us who will be watching the delayed telecast of this as well. You know, it's such a joy. I was seated right at the back of the hall and I, now I'm at the front. And I want to give thanks to God because almost every seat in this hall has been taken up. And brothers and sisters, let's not be shy to bring in more. I think the greater joy will be one day when all of a sudden, you know, we feel that, wow, there are so many new friends and visitors as well that we want to stand and worship the Lord. That our little kids have to sit on the floor in front here so that we could all come in and praise God together. So brothers and sisters, would you join me just to give glory to God? Give Him a clap offering because... Only God alone could have brought all these people, all of us, you and I here, to make a difference this day. And we look forward to many more who will come and worship together with us. Um, today, we do not have new friends, but thank God many of you are here. All of you are here, okay? We will, and I think that this is also very much in line with how God has been preparing our hearts over these 40 days. A reminder that in these 40 days, uh, next slide, please. Oh, I'm supposed to do it. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, in these 40 days, we have been very blessed by the daily devotions that has been sent to us every morning. We have also been very blessed by the prayer posts that has been, uh, the prayers that have been posted in our chat groups. I mean, I'm very honoured, I'm very privileged. Every time I happen to ask, is our leader can see your chat group or not? Huh? Wow. Praise God. Praise God for the many faithful brothers and sisters who consistently post prayers, encourage one another. And we also want to thank God for our prayer room that has blessed many people who come earlier because they want to have a moment alone with God or who stayed a little later because they want to do that. Uh, in case you have not had a chance to visit the prayer room, I would like to invite you immediately after service Go in, even if it's for two minutes, five minutes. Take time to go in and experience the presence of God in a place that's been set aside, dedicated for you to meet Him face to face. Because today, after one o'clock, we will be taking down all the different um, items that we have put up. We'll restore the chapel to a multi-purpose room again. So, yeah, if you haven't had a chance to visit or if you just want to go in and take time alone with God, you can do so up to one o'clock today. Okay? Uh, next. Uh, it's almost the end of the 40 days. Uh, National Day, we will come to the 40th day. And, you know, we've been having so many opportunities where we can express how to be a people of prayer. So on the National Day itself, this is what we like everyone in YMM to do. We're going to have a National Day Portrait of Prayer where we're going to invite you at any time on the 9th of August Wow, especially when you happen to have a flag nearby <laughs> or when you happen to stand in front of a block of flags that has a lot of Singapore flags on it or when you have the television on during the National Day Parade being telecast and you, you know, stand in front of the TV and the parade is going on behind you. Different ways to show that, hey, it's National Day. We want you to take a photo. If you happen to be alone, it's fine. Take a photo of yourself. If you are with... YMM, other YMM members, take a photo as a group. Or if you're with your family or friends, do so. As you gather in celebration, take a photo and you post it to YMM WhatsApp. Okay, if you are receiving YMM news, that's the one that you send back to YMM WhatsApp. And when you send the photo, please send a prayer together with it. I know many postmen have prayed prayers that are so long you have to read more. This one, no need, read more. This one, 
one sentence, two sentences is fine. As long as it's from the heart, a prayer of blessings for our nation. Because we need to pray for our nation. Our protection depends on that. Our well-being depends on that. Our generations after us depend on us praying for this nation as well. So let's pray for our nation. Make a special effort. I, I hear from this sister, she's, she's so interesting. She said, but Pastor Cheng Suan, a few of us are going away for a trip to China. We, will, we are leaving early in the morning on National Day. Then she thought about it. But we will take a group photo at the airport and we will send a prayer in. So that's the kind of heart we want, you know. Even our young adults, you're having your barbecue, right? Uh, br bring a flag along. And then, whoo! <laughs> take a group photo and send a prayer for our nation. So I think that's quite clear. I've given quite a few examples. So on the 9th of August, I ex we expect that there'll be many photos and prayers coming in to the YMM phone. Okay, and of course, our, our young adults will be having their National Day barbecue get-together. Uh, many have signed up. I think there's still room if you would like to join in. Just look for any of our young adults, any of our young adult leaders, and tell them you would like to come. Okay, next. Next Sunday, uh, we will we'll be saying bye, Reverend Bernard, because he'll be going to another church for that one Sunday. Because every year on CAC Sunday, the different CAC pastors will be exchanging pulpit. And we will be inviting Reverend Edmund Cole to our church. We'll be welcoming Reverend Edmund Cole. And our pastors will be sent to other churches. One thing to note as well is that uh, next Sunday, we will be taking a second offering as well. The second offering for the CAC church. So prepare your heart and you know, let's bless the, the church. Okay? So for those of you who are in the habit, a very good habit of preparing for a service by reading scriptures, you can look up Romans chapter 10, verses 8 to 15. And the topic next week will be the nearness of the word. That's it. Can I invite you, brothers and sisters, let's stand up and do the send forth song together.
on, let us receive God's blessing. Go forth and build God's kingdom in where He has called you. And as you do so, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Please be seated. We have come to the end of our worship service.